Now we're going to talk about seizures. In the increase in the cranial pressure uh, voiceover, I talked about that being the mechanical portion of the brain. Seizures have to do with the electrical conduction throughout the brain. As I just said, seizures are about the electrical conduction of the brain. And this is where the ele that electrical conduction is uncontrolled. It may be a uh, side effect of other disorders, or it may just happen uh, spontaneously without any other cause. We will talk about the more specific types of seizures as we go through this voiceover. So how do seizures happen? Well, primarily they, they start off in one place and then they spread throughout the brain. Or they could start in one place and stay there or on that one side of the brain. And we'll talk about that in a little more detail later. The most important thing is a diagnosis of where the seizure is starting. That way they can plan treatment appropriately, including surgery. So a client suffering from a seizure may or may not go through all of these phases. Um, the prodromal phase is just that phase that they have this sensation that something's not right. The oral phase is where they have a sensation like a smell or something along those lines that is a predictor to the actual seizure. The ictal phase, that's the seizure itself from the time it starts until the time it ends. And the postictal phase is just that it's after the seizure. And we'll go into a few signs and symptoms of that. Okay, so I want to make clear uh, the difference between epilepsy and seizure. The main difference is that seizures are a single occurrence, while epilepsy is an actual medical condition. Now, um, epilepsy can be um, genetically linked, but most children of people who have epilepsy do not inherit that disease or that component. It does affect actively about 2.2 million people within the United States. So now let's talk about different types of seizures. The first type of generalized seizure that we're going to talk about is the tonic clonic or formerly known as grand mal seizure. So in the tonic phase, this is where the body stiffens and if someone is standing up they may uh, fall to the floor. The second part, the clonic part, is where uh, the extremities are jerking or spasming and this is the time where we want to be sure that they're safe. So we're not going to hold them still. We're not going to stop that um, electrical discharge that's happening in their body. We're not going to stop that by holding them because that could actually provide damage um, such as pulling muscles or breaking bones. But we're going to place them on their side. Now, hopefully the clonic phase will stop on its own, but sometimes we have to administer a medication or do some other type of therapy that will help stop that uh, clonic phase. One point I want to emphasize here is that you do not put anything in someone's mouth while they are having a seizure. All right, so absent seizures. 
Again, another generalized type of seizure. We used to call them petite malls. They happen primarily in children. Um, they can resolve uh, as the child moves into adolescence or it could result in another seizure disorder. They're generally characterized by a brief staring spell. It could be in the middle of a sentence. Uh, it could be, say, a baseball player. They hit the ball and they're uh, running around first base on their way to second and halfway in between they stop and they just kind of stare um, out into the field or out into space. That's what these look like. So one of the most common types of seizures in children is a, what's called a febrile seizure, and that's where a fever uh, is sustained at 102 or greater. Um, one of the biggest things uh, to treat this is to actually give the antipyretic medication. If they're actually having the seizure, uh, then that antipyretic needs to be administered rectally. Uh, however, um, if the child regains consciousness rather quickly and is able to swallow, you can give it um, orally. The biggest thing is education, that fevers that get up to here need to be reduced. Um, they're getting up this high, need to be reduced to prevent this febrile seizure from happening in the first place. So if a seizure lasts longer than five minutes uh, with no return to normal uh, level of consciousness between the seizures, or it's a continuous for five minutes, then that's called status epilepticus, and it is an emergency. Uh, it could be because they missed uh, anti-seizure meds, it could be an infection. Uh, if it, the longer it lasts, the more likely it will not stop unless drug therapy is initiated. So a really good nursing uh, assessment related to seizures is to take a in-depth health history. We're also going to monitor vital signs. We're also going to follow up with orders for diagnostic exams, such as CTs, MRIs, EEGs. In addition, the EEG may be done uh, with a video so that we can actually capture the seizure on film along with the EEG so we can understand uh, what's happening throughout the entire process of that seizure. So if you witness a seizure, what do you need to do? Well, we need to write down the things that happened before and after. We need to talk to the client about, was there an aura? You know, was there some sort of symptom ahead of time? How did they react after the seizure? We also need to time it. So I'll talk about that later, but it's important to know how long it lasted. So if you're able to, make sure that you glance at the clock or watch and see what time it started. Of course, safety is first. This is a list of some of the um, diagnostic exams that could um, be done for a client who has a seizure disorder to um, find out what the problem is. So what do we do? Kind of talked about it a little bit before on the nursing assessment, but we're going to observe it. If there's treatment that we need to do, we'll treat it, and then we need to document it. Maintaining that patent airway, supporting the head, um, keeping them safe is the primary thing. Don't restrain them. You may need to put them on their side uh, because it could there could be vomiting involved in this. You could have to suction them or actually apply oxygen. And make sure, again, that you try to record the start and end times of any seizure. While there are a lot of medications that can treat seizures, 
these are the medications that are most often used and the ones that we will be uh, talking about and that you need to understand uh, in relationship to seizures.